Some may have you believe that you can't get a good wristwatch without parting with thousands. The watches I have in front of me beg to differ. I've picked out what I believe to be three of the very best Seiko 5 watches, which offer a surprising amount of value for considerably less than you might think. Keep watching. The ridiculously extensive Seiko 5 range is known to house some of the best value watches out there. The only issue is it's a bit of a minefield. There are a bunch of watches in here that are either no longer available, massively overpriced, or straight up ugly. But there are some gems in there too. So I've gone through the list and selected three stunning models that have got super versatile designs, which you could feasibly wear for work or play, each of which are currently available for decent prices, at least at the time of recording. We've got the SNK361, the SNKL45, and the infamous SNKL23, which are also available in other colorways. You'll find each option linked in the video description. The 361 and 23 were sent in by Amazon for previous videos, whilst I purchased the SNKL45 separately with my own money. While they all look quite similar, each of these watches has their quirks, so let's compare them and see which might align with your needs the best. Let's begin with the fit. Two of these watches share the same case, so we'll feel identical on wrist, that being the 361 and the 45. They both come in at 37mm in diameter, 105 in thickness, and 41.6mm lug tip to lug tip. The 23 is a touch larger, at 37.8mm wide, 106 thick, and 45.8mm lug to lug. While all are towards the smaller end of the watch spectrum, the latter wears slightly larger on wrist. On my thin 6.25 inch wrist, the 361 and 45 certainly sit better, though if you have large wrists, they could certainly look a bit too small. These watches are best suited to average size wrists, say 7, 7.25 inches and below. Aesthetically, both cases are great for the price and offer something slightly different. The 23 has a heavily curved swooping design that features narrow lugs and a recessed crown that gives a near symmetrical look. The others look quite similar, but have thicker shoulders around the lugs which I prefer, alongside a larger crown that is easier to use but harder to conceal. Compared to many other typical Seiko 5 watch cases, I think both case types are among the best out there and the combination of brushed and polished edges looks really good considering the retail price. They also both have enough curvature to sit neatly on the wrist without any bulging at the rear, as with other popular options like the SNXS79. The rear of each house the same exhibition window, allowing you to see the automatic 7S26 movement that powers all three of these watches. This is a hardy, reliable movement that's hard to beat when it's included in a £100 package. It's not the most accurate, but does give a relatively smooth sweep for the budget price. Supposedly, this movement has now been discontinued, making me slightly concerned about the future of all three of these wristwatches. We'll have to wait and see to see if they've got a substantial stock of them. It's one of the reasons I'm making this video today and not in 12 or 18 months time, because who knows if they'll still be made. All of these feature the same standard Hardlex hardened mineral crystal covering the dials, which is the average material at this price point. This is essentially a similar glass to that found in your windows and offers a limited amount of scratch resistance. I prefer a sapphire, but considering some of the positives these watches boast, it's not bad. Before we look beneath those crystals, there's one factor that all of these watches have got in common, the rubbish bracelets. I'm pretty sure I do that same zoom in almost all of these Seiko videos. Yeah, this is the weak point of many low-end Seikos and it's the same story here. The SNKL45 probably has the best feeling one off the bat, but all are constructed with folded links and feel fairly cheap. Unless you like the feeling of your arm hairs being ripped out, you'll probably want to substitute these at some point. While all three watches look alike at a glance, each has its nuances. The SNKL45 has perhaps the simplest appearance with a classic deep grey near black dial combined with a plain dark date window and an array of fairly standard markers. You'll notice that compared to the alternatives, this has slightly elongated hour markers, with the luminescent pips positioned towards the center rather than the perimeter. When seeing this in videos online, I thought it might spoil my enjoyment of the piece. However, having spent time with the watch, it's not been any sort of issue. Overall, this piece does bear a resemblance to some other famous watches, with its nickname of the Baby Grand Seiko indicating just one of them. With a Dauphine handset, it could undoubtedly make for a viable substitute to the now discontinued Saab 033, which is now selling for far over retail price. I particularly like the red second hand, which provides a pop of color to a watch that could otherwise look rather boring. 
With a similar handset, the SNKL23 looks rather similar, though takes a different approach to individualism. This one features a subtle dark grey vertical stripe pattern around the chapter ring, set against the black backdrop. In certain lighting conditions, this comes into its own and showcases the surprising level of finishing that's gone into these budget watches. This is further exemplified by the faceted silver surround to the black date window, which blends in seamlessly with the other markers and logos. For more information on this watch, make sure you watch the video in the iCard after which is the full review. Perhaps the most unique take is that offered by the SNK361, which features an interesting array of microscopic fives across the dial. The awful stock images for each of these watches really don't do them justice and it's particularly the case with this model, where that small detailing just isn't even visible, it just looks like a pixelated mess. Bruh. Like the 45, I wasn't sure if this would come off in person, I thought perhaps it could look a bit tacky. However, I'm glad to say this is clutched up too. Unlike the others, this 361 houses a set of baton hands compounding the aesthetic similarities to the Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Is this finishing on the watch as good as that on a Rolex? Come on guys, who do you think I am? But either way, low light performance is pretty decent across all these models with comparable brightness and duration on each, which I wasn't expecting. Something else to note is that the logo positioning is quite a bit different on each of these. Due to the longer indices, the Seiko Text and 5 logo are noticeably lower on the 45 versus the other two. It's a little bit below that standard position that you might find on other watches. Whether that affects your enjoyment of the watch, I'll let you decide. There's something I need to throw in here too. In the SNKL23 review video, a couple of people noted that there appeared to be manufacturing faults with the hands and a sloppy logo application. Please bear in mind that when you're watching my videos, some of these shots are taken using a super macro lens, which makes things appear many, many times larger than they are in real life. And I think this is the level where you begin to notice the finishing differences between affordable watches like these and higher end luxury watches. To the naked eye, even a point blank, these typically aren't visible. So I don't think you should particularly be worrying about them unless you're spending thousands on the wristwatch. If there's something that I think you will notice with the human eye, I'll normally mention it in the video. But anyway, which of these do I think is best then? Well, personally, the 45 has seen the most wrist time out of these three. I'm not sure that quantifies it as the best, as each of these watches has got essentially the same specifications and the same materials. However, maybe the sleek design appeals to me on some sort of subconscious level. All I know is I enjoy wearing this the few times Casio does leave my wrist. To be clear, I think with three very similar watches like these, price does have to come into the equation. Sometimes these popular Seikos shoot up in price out of the blue. So in the UK, don't be spending more than about 140 on these, especially not over 200. Currently, the SNK361 is selling for a chunk lower than the others at most retailers. And in my view, you're not really getting less of a watch either. So perhaps that's the real winner here? It's linked below, along with the others. Give me your thoughts below, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.